Hello, welcome to Prigium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 89 of ASP.NET video series. In part 87 of this video series, we have discussed the basics of Windows authentication. And in part 80, 88, we discussed about how to allow or deny access to specific users, how to do role-based authorization, and finally, we discussed about how to programmatically check if a user belongs to a specific role. In this session, we'll discuss about folder level authorization within Windows authentication. Let's understand that with an example. Look at the solution explorer here. Um, within this web application one project, I have a folder called admin and it has got an admin page. Now, only administrators should be able to access the pages within admin folder. The rest of the pages that are outside of the admin folder, for example, web form one, can be accessed by anyone. Is this possible to achieve with Windows authentication? Absolutely. Let's see how to do that. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So I have web application one here. Right click on the project. Let's add a folder with the name admin. And then this folder is going to contain a web form. So let's right click on that add. I'm going to call that new item. And let's add a web form. And let's call that admin page. So admin page click add and then I'm going to use uh, an h1 just to display that this is an admin page admin page so that should show up nicely admin page all right now let's add a web.config file to this folder so right click on the folder add a new item and then I'm going to add a web configuration file Okay, so now I'm going to specify some authorization settings for this web.config file that's present in admin folder. So here, what we're going to do, we're going to tell, we're going to make use of this authorization element. And here, I will say, allow rules is equal to administrators. So we are allowing the administrator role and we are denying access to everybody else. So deny users is equal to star. Star indicates all users. So now the settings that we have specified in the web.config file of this folder are applicable to all the pages that is going to be present in this folder. So admin page is present in uh, admin page is present in admin folder. So this page will now be accessible only to administrators. Now, what is the other thing that we want to do? The pages that are outside of the admin folder, for example, webform1.aspx is outside of the admin folder, and I want that to be available to all the users, to all the authenticated users. So how do I do that? I have another web.config file within the root directory of this web application project. So here, I specify the authorization settings. So here, I am saying, OK, um, you know, delete that allow here. And I'm going to say deny users is equal to question mark, meaning deny access only to unauthenticated users. Rest others allow access. OK, now I'm logged in as Prasad into this computer. So let's check which is the group Prasad belongs to. And to check that, you know, click on Start button computer, right click on that and select Manage, which should bring up the computer management window. And within that, expand local users and groups. And then if you select users, you should see Prasad there. And if I double click that, Prasad is a member of administrators and home users group. And if you look at this, you know, the web form, web form one should be accessible to everyone and admin page should be accessible to administrators. Since I am logged in as Prasad who belong to admin group, I should be able to access both of these pages. So let me try to access web form one first. So when I press control F5, I should be authenticated and I should be able to access this web form. So I'm authenticated as Prasad and I'm able to access web form one. Now let's say if I am able to access the admin page, Let's press Control F5 again. So I'm able to access the admin page as well, OK? Because within the web.config file of that admin folder, we specified allow roles administrators. OK, now let's quickly you know, check Venkat. So there are other users as well on this computer. Uh, Venkat is a user. Now if you check the member of tab, Venkat is not an administrator. Now let's add Venkat here. to administrators group. So 
type in administrators, check that. So Venkat is also part of administrators group right now. Okay, now instead of allowing all administrators, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say allow user is equal to on this machine, I want to allow only Venkat. So Venkat is an administrator on this computer. So I want to allow only that user access to the admin page. Okay, so now let's close this save this web.config file. Now remember I'm logged in as Prasad so I should now not be able to access that page. So let's go to admin page. Let's press control F5 there. Now the you know when we try to access that look at that there is a prompt. Now I have to supply the credentials of Venkat otherwise I will not be able to access that admin page. So if I cancel that as you might expect access denied but on the other hand I can access web form 1 which is present in the root directory because web form 1 allow access um, you know basically all the pages that are outside of the admin folder uh, any user any authenticated user can access them how do we know because in this web.config file is specified only deny access to unauthenticated users okay so that's the admin folder web.config file now and this is the um, web.config file in the root directory of the web application project. Now a very common interview question is, uh, is it possible to have more than one web.config file? Absolutely. And if they ask you when do you use more than one web.config file or why do you use, you know, you have a practical example that you can give. Okay, if you want to do folder level authorization with web dot, uh, with Windows authentication, then it's definitely helpful to have more than web.config file. Okay, now if you look at this, you know, whatever is the page that you are accessing, once you are authenticated, the application code is actually executed using the application pool's identity. Okay. Now, instead of using the application pool identity to execute the application code, I want to use the logged in user identity. How do we do that? We discussed about this in, in the previous sessions as well. We enable impersonation. And how do we enable impersonation? Let's say, for example, you know, when, when somebody access the admin page, you know, I want the code that is related to admin pages to be executed using the logged in user identity. In that case, within the web.config file of the admin folder, we can enable impersonation. So let's enable impersonation. So identity impersonate is equal to true. So now we only enabled impersonation in the web.config file that's present in the admin folder. We haven't done that to the web.config file in the root application in the root directory of the web application project. So now if I go ahead and run this, so I am on web form one, which is accessible to all users. So I'm logged in as Prasad, so I'm able to access that and look at that. Within the root directory, within the root um, within the web.config file of the root applic root directory we have not enabled impersonation that's why if you look at this code application code executed using the application pool identity now let's quickly copy the same piece of code from this page to admin page so admin page right click view code within the page load event let's copy that as well Okay, now let me go ahead and access this page. Now remember, we uh, I am logged in as Prasad, who doesn't belong to, uh, who is not Venkat. So if you remember, within the admin folder, the web.config file, we said allow only access to Venkat, but I am logged in as Prasad. So obviously I will not be able to access that page unless and until I provide the credentials of Venkat. So I have provided them, I click login, oops, so Venkat test login. Look at that. You know, the application code is now executed using, uh, you know, the logged in user identity, in this case, Venkat. Okay. So it's also possible to enable impersonation, uh, you know, for a few of the pages and not for the other pages. And we have just seen how to do that. Okay. So 
If you want to execute the application code using the logged in administrator account, then enable impersonation in the web.config file of the admin folder. With that setting in place, all the pages in the admin folder are now executed using the logged in user account, whereas the pages outside of the folder are executed using the identity of the application pool. And we have just seen that. And it is also possible to impersonate with a specific username and password. Now, if you see here the way we are impersonating, we just said identity impersonate is equal to true, meaning whoever is the logged in user that's accessing the pages, then that user account is used to execute the application code. But instead of that, you know, is it possible to hard code a specific account? Absolutely. All you have to do is specify the username and password. So username, I'm going to say Prasad and password, uh, maybe let's use here Venkat. So that's the username and that's the password. Okay. Now let's allow all rules actually all administrator. So I'm going to say allow roles is equal to administrators. All right. So now I am logged in as Prasad. So I belong to administrators. I should be able to access the admin page and look at the web.config file here. You know, we are impersonating, but then we are impersonating with a specific account, Venkat's account. So whether I log in as Prasad or whether I log in as Venkat or I, whether I log in as a different administrator, always the application code is going to be executed using this account. Okay, so I'm logged in as Prasad. So if I run this now, I am able to access that page. Look at that. I'm logged in as Prasad, but look at the application code is executed using uh, Venkat's account. Why? Because within the web.config file, we have hard coded the impersonating account details. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.